Good evening and welcome to the channel Honest Reviews of Everything. My name is Danny and thank you very much for watching this evening's video. As we can tell from the clock, it is pretty late at night, 10 p.m. I've had to wait until the sun has completely gone in for this video and it will be a drive along POV video, um, obviously in the dark. Um, thank you for all my subscribers who have been commenting over the past few weeks and like I say, really, really appreciate it. Um, something I would like to pick up on a couple of videos ago when I did an exterior walk around on the lighting of my car outside, I foolishly during the video said that the projector came down from the door handles. I knew my mistake straight away. It does actually come down from the wing mirrors. So thank you for everybody who pointed that out. Like I say, got plenty of um, contributions and messages regarding that one, but nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. So I really hope you enjoy the video. Like I say, um, any questions you have, like I say, just comment away and I'll give you a little bit of a run and commentary as we're going along. So sit back, enjoy and thank you very much for watching. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna go on a quick little drive around on the evening so you can get a full appreciation of how fantastic the car looks on the interior of the cockpit due to the fantastic lighting that is inside and then the fantastic headlights that are on there as well. As I've talked about them previously, they're LEDs. And like I said, they've completely changed everything I've thought about nighttime driving. So we're just coming out of the cul-de-sac now, and we'll go on a little bit of a drive around. Clear the windscreen. So I would like to take this opportunity to once again thank everybody for all their feedback on the channel. Um, every single morning I, I wake up and excitedly grab onto my telephone to have a little look to see what new comments and new interactions I've had with you all. And um, yeah, the subscriber count just keeps going from strength to strength. I think I'm at around about 1,350 subscribers now which is um, absolutely fantastic. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that in the past couple of weeks, I've had nearly 300 new subscribers. And like I say, it's, it's very, very much appreciated by myself. And the feedback that you guys give me makes a big difference to what sort of content I manage to put onto the channel on a week to week basis. I'm um, here in the UK, the weather has been absolutely diabolical for probably about two weeks now, so I've not had really the chance to create as much content as I'd have liked to have done. There's a few different videos that I've got in mind that I want to do with the car, but unfortunately due to, like I say, the weather and it constantly pouring down with rain, I've not really had the, the chance to do what I want to do, but hopefully in the upcoming weeks, I'll be able to get some more content on a more regular basis out to you all. Just coming off of the estate now, we're just gonna head down to a little bit of dual carriageway and give the car a little bit of a run out for you all. Still one of my favorite looks in this car is, let's say, the, the digital display, what we've got up there, the digital speedometer, especially on a night time, absolutely just glows up fantastically. We've got all the ambient lighting around the car as well. I've done previous videos on this that I'm sure you've all seen, or my previous subscribers have seen. If you're new to the channel, look that up because that's a, a great video as well, talking about the ambient lighting features that comes with the car. I've currently got mine set to purple at the moment. I'll give you a quick run round when we park up in a little while, but 
yeah the interior cabin on this car is fantastic and that is like I say even more prominent when you are in the dark I suppose it's the same in a lot of the new cars when they've got the digital displays this is my first car with a digital display so I've never really paid much attention to it but um, it does have its faults don't get me wrong like I say a lot of fingerprints and dust sticking to the screens and you've forever got um, the microfiber cloth that I've got in my little side panel down here to keep it as clean as possible but I can't see me ever going back to the traditional I suppose they're almost analog dials compared to the digital ones so we're just coming on to a little bit of dual carriageway now the street lights will disappear and we can have a little look at the headlights and how they perform motor on up to 60 mile an hour there's no one in front so as I've said to my subscribers previously this is my first car with LED headlights and how I've managed to survive without them previously I have no ideas they've just they're just fantastic absolutely fantastic they light up the whole road if we just click it now it's going to give it full beam see for absolutely way way off into the distance I'll just turn them off just so you can get a, a little aspect of how that looks the car itself I'm still really enjoying the drive not really drove it a whole lot, just of recent my wife's been driving this particular car backwards and forwards to work. I'm back at work now in the UK as well and where I tend to leave my car isn't the most secure of places so I've been driving um, the old car and my wife's been taking this one to her work. She can park it in a, a secure car parking site and we don't have to worry about anybody bumping into her or car being vandalized and anything along those sort of lines so I perhaps only tend to get out when a lot of the time when I'm doing these videos or if we have a day off as a family then we tend to use this car just setting the limiter on my car still one of my favorite features so I don't have to worry about those pesky speed those pesky speeding tickets it's a bit of a mouthful there We'll put the lights back on full beam again just so you can get a look at how they are performing in the dark also one of the features you can get on this particular model I've talked about it previously is the auto high beam assist what this does is it um, turns the auto high beam or turns the high beam on automatically there's a camera at the top there and then that will sense the road ahead to see whether there's any traffic on the opposite side and if there is it will obviously deactivate the high beam and if there isn't it will then activate it itself like i say it's um, just a simple software upgrade that can be done on any of the cars comes in from the bmw store around about 160 pounds i'm not quite sure what that translates to in dollars or if you're watching overseas but that's the that's the price it is in the uk 160 pounds a good feature and something that I'm toying with the idea of getting in the future but because I've not been doing a whole lot of nighttime driving it's not really something that has interested myself really at the moment although I've had a few of my um, subscribers talk to me about it and they say it's a fantastic feature so I'm tempted at this moment in time shall we say back on with the high beam do is we're going to go a little bit further we're going to come up to some dual carriageway in a second we're just going to turn the limiter off excellent and we'll cruise on round do a quick loop and then come back the way we have just come I've been speaking to a lot of my subscribers just of recent who are frustratingly still waiting for their BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe to be delivered 
there's been a lot of issues with manufacturing at this moment in time due to obviously COVID-19 and the restrictions that that is causing. It's causing a lot of havoc when it comes to um, the manufacture, I'm assuming, of components and parts over in China or wherever they are manufactured and it's having a knock-on effect right across Europe. I had a gentleman who had his car on order for six weeks, was told there was another six to wait, and then got a telephone call from his dealership to say, unfortunately, they physically can't fulfill the order. They've got no ideas when they're going to be able to, to fulfill it and had to cancel. So hopefully there's not gonna to affect too many people, but um, it is happening out there. So if you are considering getting one of these cars or any new car at the moment, I would be trying to find out guarantees from your dealers as to um, what the lead times are like. Perhaps look for stock cars. If there's anything in the UK waiting in port that could be sold because um, yeah, you may end up waiting quite a considerable amount of time, which is not ideal at all. But if you're prepared to wait then that's fantastic it just depends on how patient you are i'm not a very patient person but um i know some people are more than happy to wait long lengths of time for these special cars so that is good for them i'm just looking to turn around here and there's a lorry just parked taking up pretty much all the slip road which isn't ideal look at doing is just quickly going back the way we have come and around we go make it up to speed because there's a car coming but I don't think there's going to be any problems with that for those who watched my previous video on the 0 to 60 that was a, a very enjoyable video that I did and I've had some great responses off of that it's actually my most watched video for the for the week for the first seven days it has been uploaded i've had just over 900 views on that which is fantastic and i thank you all again for that i sort of already knew that that was going to be a popular video so i'd had numerous requests for it so um yeah i definitely enjoyed doing it no speeding tickets so that was a good result uh, if you remember during the video i had the limo to 60 anyway so i didn't have to worry about any um unnecessary nasty surprises shall we say dropping through the door in the form of a fixed penalty notice we definitely don't want none of those i don't know if you just noticed there the steering wheel jerked a little bit i'm still having issues with the lane departure if you don't indicate it tries to correct where you're going it's just a habit that i've got at the moment Obviously you can turn it off with the button just there, but I tend to forget to do that. Just coming off the dual carriageway now. So a little bit about the channel and what I'm hoping to do going forward. I'm still getting backwards and forwards conversations with a couple of different garages now I suppose it's just the whole these garages they are part of a much bigger company so they have to check things with their marketing people to see whether or not the, the excuse me the content I'm planning on filming is suitable for their brand so it's just taken a lot longer than what I thought it ever would do. I'm sort of like at the stage, as I've mentioned previously, that I've got a few more videos that I can do with this particular car. And then I'm gonna start running out of ideas as to where I can and can't go with it. I mean, the channel is honest reviews of everything, so we can also now start looking at reviewing different products and services. I'm more than happy to do that, but I know the majority of my audience has been built off of this one particular car which is phenomenal and like I say I'm really appreciative of that but I may have to sooner or later start looking into expanding what I'm doing with when it comes to my reviews just to reach out to new subscribers to try and keep my content relevant and new and keep as much content uploading as I possibly can because there's nothing more frustrating when 
one, I can't get outside to do the review on the car just simply because of the fact it's pouring rain here in the UK. Like I say, we're, we have, we're used to that, so it's just something that I have to put up with, but it's not, not ideal at all when you're trying to do outside photography and the wind's howling and the rain is lashing itself down. So, yeah, I may have to start to broaden my horizons a little bit on what I actually <coughs> review going forward. But I'm going to still keep doing as much as I can with this particular car because I know a lot of people have got a real interest in it. I'm trying to expand and get access to other cars within the BMW family just so I can demonstrate some different features that my car doesn't have that could be relevant to yourselves and can make all the difference. Like I said, I'm still getting a lot of people asking me questions and advice on whether or not this is a good car to purchase. Obviously, in my eyes, I think it's a fantastic car. It just depends on what you're going to want from a vehicle, really. My previous car, as I mentioned before, was a 4x4, and I have started to notice the kids are moaning a little bit in the back. That's not quite perhaps as spacious as what the, the 4x4 was. I mean, they're only little children anyway, three and six, but it's just something that I've noticed. The windows aren't quite as big. They like to look at the windows in the previous car, but I still love it, so, and I'm the one paying for it. <laughs> But now, if you're after like a small, sporty little car, then this car is ideal for that. Like I said, I've only got the, the 218i, which is this particular model here. It's only a 1.5 engine, but you get a hell of a lot of engine for that 1.5. Like I said, brake horse is around about, I always get this mixed up. Oh, look, there's a deer running across the, the road. I don't know if you see that, just going across there. Yeah, I always get a little bit mixed up when it comes to the miles per hour and brake horsepower. They're very, very close. I think I'm going to guess top speed 138 and the brake horse, whoops, is 136 or 139. I'm sure you're going to correct me on it, but um, again, as I said, nobody's perfect. I need to change my limiter now because I was at 60. I'm now resetting it back to 40 on the steering wheel. It just becomes a little bit of a habit to keep setting it now. I'd feel very strange if I didn't. I've also got some um, new equipment coming shortly. I've got it on order from the Tinterweb. And fingers crossed that's going to make some of my videos a little bit more dynamic. I've been practicing different photography techniques and filters just to try and jazz up the appearance of my videos, try and make them a little bit more eye-catching on YouTube and hopefully get those few extra subscribers that we're all longing for. Just coming back onto the estate now. Only about a minute or two from home. A little bit more illuminated around here, so you can probably see a little bit more. I wish I'd have brought a glass of water with me. I've got a right tickle on my throat the whole time I've done this video, so I apologize if I've been coughing and yakking away. pretty much there now. So before I take you on the last quick flash around the cabin, just to show you the um, ambient lighting and a couple of other features as well, I'd just like to say thank you once again for all the, the feedback that you've been giving me. If there is anything in particular you want to see or if you're new to the channel, and there's something you want to see on this particular car, please just comment away and I'll always try and 
accommodate as best as I can to try and make sure that I'm fulfilling people's wishes when it comes to the videos and I'm giving you the relevant information. Time goes so quick, 25 minutes that was nearly from start to finish. And around we go. Parking up. There we be. So I'm just going to take the camera back. Okay, so I apologize there, the, the camera fell off, so. A little bit of edit work to do for myself, but I'm parked back up again. And like I say, I'll just take you around the cabin just so you can see the ambient lighting, which is all down there. I've currently got it set to purple, but it's all on the door sills, all around the front, down in the cigarette light, or it's all around there. And then when we scroll around again, just on the remainder of the doors, it goes through the back of the car as well. You can actually change the ambient lighting to numerous different colors. I think there's red, orange, green, blue, or the purple. I tend to leave mine on the purple all the time. It's the one that my girls like, so that's the way it stays. So yeah, back onto the digital display. Going into there. And then we've got some more on there. So yeah, just a, a quick video there. Like I say, I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I say, my name is Danny. Thank you very much for watching this evening. Um, this is the channel, honest reviews of everything. Please like, subscribe, comment away, and I'll see you all again very soon. Take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. Bye-bye now.